Good morning, good afternoon. We are so excited to interview Melissa Barak of Barak Ballet. Hi, Melissa. Hey, how are you? <laughs> so let's tell us a little bit about you and also about your creative vision for the ballet. Yeah, well, um, the, I'm the director and founder of Barack Ballet. I founded the company in um, 2013. Uh, we've been performing every year since. And um, it was, uh, it was, you know, I mean, obviously it's been a labor of love for the past seven years. And um, we've been slowly growing and slowly building a really strong reputation here in Los Angeles. Um, performing at the Broad stage, mostly in Santa Monica. Uh, we've performed with the LA Phil at the Walt Disney Concert Hall a couple times. We've done a nut new Nutcracker suite with them, as well as um, we were part, a big portion of the Fall Gala in 2015, we were really lucky to be part of. Um, and yeah, we've been to New York, we've performed at the Joyce and Jacob's Pillow, which were huge milestones. That was our fifth anniversary, was getting to perform at both those venues. Um, so that was very special. And we've, uh, yeah, we're now, you know, even in talks about a residency with, uh, you know, a venue out here in LA and a lot of exciting things have, you know, really come of this company and it's gone. In a, in a direction artistically that I have to say I'm really proud of. It's, it's, it's the goal and the vision that I had for it. Um, starting out, it's, it's, really, it's really evolved into what I was hoping it would, it would be. Um, so don't take this the wrong way, please, but what were you not thinking about starting a company seven years ago? In LA, no less. Tell us a little bit about LA and how that would be different than thinking of doing this in New York or even Chicago or something like that. Well, it's funny. It's like LA offers a lot of possibility because of the sheer fact that there really hasn't been a legitimate dance. Um, there's always been dance in LA for sure. I mean, for 30 years, you know, I mean, there's been companies and activity, but there's never been like a solid community, like where you really felt and knew what the local dance scene was. Um, so in a way, you know, LA has its pros because of that open possibility. Yeah. Um, whereas in a place like New York, which is just so, uh, known for dance. I mean, it's part of the culture, uh, just as much as the Philharmonic and the museum scene and the art scene, the dance scene in New York is so prevalent. But the problem there is that it's really, it's just overly saturated. Plus you have, you know, these mega dance institutions that's sort of difficult to, it's difficult, I would imagine, to rise up as a, as a smaller company, just because you've got American Ballet Theater in New York, uh, City Ballet and Alvin Ailey, um, and, uh, yeah, Theater of Harlem and Ballet and Hispanico and then Ballet if, you, Hispanico. if you like Flamenco, Noche Flamenco, I mean, it just goes yeah. on and on. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, 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 so it's just, it's an oversaturated market. Plus there are a ton of small chamber companies like Barack Ballet, whereas in LA, um, you know, like I said, it's maybe not such a, a scene, but the scene is starting to build and starting to grow out here. And it's pretty cool to be part of one of the, I feel like Barack Ballet has been one of the major players in creating that, um, this sort of pioneering moment that dance is seeing in Los Angeles. Do the audiences feel different to you, like demographically, age-wise, interest level, sophistication level-wise? Because you are a ballet company. Yeah, you're not, you're not, you know, it's not all socks. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, it's, yeah, I mean, I think I, I'm from LA, so I, um, I've always just felt that I kind of knew what people wanted to see here. Okay. okay. Um, you know, and LA, it's, it's a little different. I, like, I don't think ballets, like, I remember it as a young girl, like, seeing ballets like Agon and Four Temperaments, and it was just, it's, um, 
as a young girl in LA growing up, that th those ballets to me didn't really, uh, I wasn't attracted to them. Um, people out here tend to like, uh, you know, I don't know, just something with more theater, you know, it has to have a little bit more um, theatricality to it. Uh, I mean, there are, there's a big portion of the audience here that is very sophisticated. A lot of people are from New York or grew up going to the ballet in Chicago and New York. And so you do have a fair amount of people in LA that are actually, that are quite literate when it comes to dance and seeing dance. Um, and a lot of people here are into the experimental. Um, they're really open to kind of the weird avant-garde um, kind of work. So it's, it's sort of, a, it is a, it's a broad range. You've got a broad range of people with a broad range of tastes. It's such a, you know, you think of it as such a movie town and yet there's, I've talked to a lot of um, uh, uh, visual artists who have flocked to LA and it's, it always feels like there's a ton going on but the scene hasn't quite cohered. And yeah. this is just about to. Um, let, let me push you a little bit more and ask, why a dance company? Why not just choreograph? Um, was that a conscious decision? Like the only way I'm going to see the vit, get my vision on the stage is by starting a company or there were specific people you wanted to work with. Why start a company? Yeah, I mean, I didn't like the idea of sending my stuff to various directors and kind of putting my career in other people's hands. Um, I'm the kind of person that if I'm not happy with a situation, instead of complaining, I'll do something about it. So that's what I did. It's like, whether I'm not getting work because I'm X, Y, Z, who the hell knows, but um, I was just, I'm the kind of person, instead of complaining, I'll start my own thing um, or I'll take action. And so that's what I did. It was, and it's, it's just, I feel like I've created some of my best work um, being my own boss. And a big key thing for me is getting to hand pick the dancers that I want to work with. I've always just felt like, I've always felt, I, I, I've never seen dancers as just clay um, or material. I, I see dancers as, you know, not just tools, but you know, these entities in which to share, uh, you know, a back and forth and a creative, um, a creative dynamic that is just really important to me. Like my dancers and their individuality um, and character uh, as people and as artists has always just really informed um, like how I picture, picture ballets in my head. You know, when I hear music, I need to, you need um, to people, um, which I think is, is a big change. I, two big changes I've noticed from, you know, way back in the day, 40, 45 years ago, is that at least when we talk to the female choreographers, so much of the joy, so much of the excitement is working with dancers. Very collaborative process, even though um, in speaking with the choreographer, they've got a vision, but there's an openness to things that might happen versus I have it all set in my head and these, these bodies who aren't really people to me need to yeah. create a look. Yeah. That I think is a massive change. Uh, yeah. the, other, the other change that I really see in here is the willingness to take feedback from the dancers, mm -hmm. to be receptive to, well, what about this? What about that? Uh, yeah, I love that collaborative dynamic. I like having them be part of the process. Um, yeah, I, I, I just... I'm not the kind of person that just like, you know, shut up and do what I say. And, you know, I, I feel dancers need to feel part of the process um, in order, in order for the work to stand out, they need to stand out and you have to create a space in which they feel like they're, you know, respected and, and they're seen. I think that's what a big a concept, thing. right? <laughs> yeah. No, I think for dancers, you know, to really be seen by the person you know, directing you, choreographing on you. I think that's kind of a gift. How do you as an artistic director in the middle of a global pandemic where California opened and then shut back down again, how do you keep a sense of community and cohesion with your dancers, with your funders, with your board of directors? No, um, no. You've got 30 seconds to answer that. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, email. 
email and phone calls, just, you know, reaching out to the dancers when there's an idea or when, you know, I have something coming up for them that um, I need them to kind of rally for. And board of directors, we do a once a month meeting via Zoom. So we've been, we actually just had a meeting on Sunday. Um, and then, yeah, and then same with donors, just staying in touch with them, checking in with them, how they're doing. And um, yeah, email and Zoom is just sort of in the key. So you're not doing company workouts or company class per se during this no, time? No, I, I, I did do um, like some, some Instagram live classes in the beginning, but I was, I kept getting shut out because I like using like you know, famous music from big albums. And they started to like block me from, <laughs> yeah, I was like using Tom Petty and REM and like, it was really fun. I was like enjoying it and people were loving the classes. But I, like, would, I would sign up for that. Yeah, it was fun. really fun. Being a female leader can be a little bit isolating. Um, and it is important to have, you know, folks to reach out to and say, what do you think about this? Or I'm gonna tell I mean, you I'm more. pretty, I, I'm pretty decisive. Like, I don't, I usually don't, I mean, I'll, I want to hear other people's, you know, takes on things, but I'm usually pretty decisive. I never feel like I'm caught in the middle, like with not, nowhere to turn or not sure where to go. I'm usually, for you. Like, yeah. I need to be more like you. <laughs> uh, how do you have, or have you had to have yet those difficult conversations where a dancer just isn't working out, whether you have to terminate their contract or you know, get more effort out of them. And that could be other than just with a dancer. Yeah. I mean, I think just being honest with people, you know, coming from a place of, you could still be honest and still come from a place of kindness, but I'm all about being assertive upfront and no BS. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm not about being mean or disrespectful, but I'm definitely all about being assertive and honest. And, you know, just letting somebody know, like, you know, you could, you could phrase something in a way that's compassionate, but still, um, you know, that you need to see more from them or, you know, something different. Um, so, yeah, just, you know, kind of phrasing things in a way that, like, you definitely draw more flies with honey than with vinegar. Yep. <laughs> Have you had a mentor in or out of the business? Somebody, somebody that you were a model or are you just kind of forging along on your own? Yeah, I mean, I just sort of, you know, I, I danced with New York City Ballet for almost 10 years and that was a very, was a very established large institution. And then I danced with Los Angeles Ballet when they just started. So that was almost the opposite experience where it was a very small company and, uh, you know, and it's just, you know, and it's growing, growing uh, years. And it was just me sort of experiencing and observing how things were run, things that I liked, things that I didn't like. Um, and I just sort of, you know, just really observed the, those 13 years of being a professional between New York City Ballet and LAB. Um, and then I also got to dance with Christopher Wielden's company, Morphosis. Um, Morphosis. I don't know. Uh, I'm still was, trying to figure out how to I say know. it. How did you say? Morphosis. Um, but, uh, and that was interesting too, because that was like a more pickup company chamber style uh, situation, which is kind of what Baroque Ballet is. Um, so yeah, it was, I, I got to really sort of be part of and experience. Big, company. little, but established and pick up with a big name. Yeah. 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 Like what worked, what didn't, what I felt could be done better, what I felt could be done different. Um, so it was really, yeah, I didn't really have much mentorship. It was more just like, Again, me figuring out, you know, what it deciding, what do I, wh which direction do I want to go? And how do you decide when you want to commission versus create yourself? And how do you pick who you commission? I mean, I, well, being that the company's Barack Ballet, every program I try to at least like, if it's a, if it's a, um, you know, a repertoire program, I try to, I'll make sure I have at least one new work uh, or one piece of mine in the program. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, Baroque Ballet is not, it never was intended to be a company of just my work. I'm really, what makes me excited as a director is curation. 
I love finding other choreographic talent and visual talent and other people that we could get involved to bring, you know, just more, more diversity, more, more freshness, you know, more uh, excitement. Um, so I'm always looking for new talent to either collaborate with or, you know, choreographers that I feel are really have something interesting to say and their movements interesting. And also if I feel like my dancers will respond well to yeah. that movement. So I need to make sure that the choreographer I invite is a good fit. It's gotta and be a kind of knows how to work with dancers on a more personal level and not just, you know, somebody who's like, you know, like I hear about people that just come in and, you know, they sort of even have their assistant show the steps. And I don't know, it's just, I want somebody that really cares and really cares to bring out the qualities of the dancers that they have in front of them. And again, that goes back to your seeing your dancers as people and in, in a, you know, part of that process, not just bodies on which you set that. Yeah. You know, you've got so many jobs going on. How do you find choreographers you're interested in or new works or visual things that excite you? Um, are you like zooming a lot? Are you um, going through archives? Are you, how do you find, how do you find the new voices that you want to platform? Yeah, I mean, well, the internet is a huge resource, obviously just, you know, or Instagram, you know, there's tons of people posting their clips and posting their work. And then I'm like, oh, this, this person looks, you know, that was an interesting clip. And then I'll look into that website, you know, and start watching their videos and seeing the kind of works they've done. I also, when, when we were able to, I was going, you know, I go to see a lot of live performance for big companies, smaller companies, smaller sort of dance festivals and choreography labs. I like to discover like new undiscovered talent, but then obviously, um, I want to bring in, you know, choreographers with a bigger reputation and name. Um, so, you know, it, it comes down to, uh, at the end of the day, it just, it comes down to, you know, what work strikes me and what I think is going to be a right, the right fit. For your dancers. So the totally unfair question, totally unfair. Assuming no budget, mm -hmm. anything you want, what would that look like? Mm. Oh, well, I do have this piece in mind um, for 36 dancers. <laughs> do tell. Yeah, well, I, I'm not, I don't want to say too much because it is a piece that I do feel is going to happen at some point, but it's hey. uh, it, it would be a really big, it's a four movement piece. The music is Philip Glass, which I've never used music by Philip Glass yet um, for my choreography, but it's this piece that I've really been drawn to for like the past 10 years but it would involve 36 dancers. So, so that, are, you, are you doing that at the back of your mind, like while you're running through your day, are you playing with things and adding to it somewhere in the back of your mind? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll play the music every now and again. I've already choreographed like the whole fourth movement. It's already, oh, okay. yeah, I've had it in my head for a long time, but yeah, we're talking like 36 dancers. So, and also for 36 dancers, we need quite a big stage. So if I have to rent, you know, a big theater <laughs> um, and then obviously to market, you know, that performance. Um, but yeah, that's, that's sort of one of my big, big budget, uh, big dream projects. Is there any one quality other than determination and what I'm, I'm hearing from you, which is you have a really good sense of where you want to go that you think is important for artistic directors, CEO, et cetera, if you're going to run a company? Yeah, I mean, I think you need to, you need to have a little bit of the both sides of the brain working. You know, you can't be all heart, no brains. You can't be all brains, no heart. You really have to use both. You have to have compassion, but you have to be smart, and not be a pushover. It's, and I think for women in particular, that continues to be a little bit more of a struggle. Okay, yeah. we're going to go back to the big heavy uh, industry wide stuff at the end, but I thought we'd play with the lightning round. Favorite dance memory? Uh, favorite dance memory doing the Nutcracker at um, with Los Angeles Ballet. It was like this one performance where it was just uh, me and my partner, we were on. And every time I think back on that memory, it's just like, you know, it was like glory days. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Can you, can you still feel it? I mean, the, in oh, yoga, yeah. like on a cellular level, it's been imprinted. 
oh, oh yeah it's like I could I could relive that moment like doing the finale and just hitting every pirouette and just really like feeling totally free and on it was exciting so yeah that's that's a big memory I look back on um favorite ballet can be yours can be somebody else's you can pick more than one yeah the cage Jerome Robbins I'm obsessed with that ballet I always have been it's a brilliant work musically theatrically um when you see the right person do the the novice which I saw Wendy Whalen doing it in her prime Ooh, um, Broadway or West End or someplace else <laughs> I guess Broadway <laughs> dream destination post COVID hmm I do want to check out the Greek islands at some point. Do you Never. know how many people have said that? I think, yeah. I think we're, we're all sort of circling around that, which then brings up Beach or we'll Mountain. All there. We'll all meet up there. That sounds great, which else, and I'm buying we'll dinner. Um, we got, and we'll just like island hop. We'll that do it. actually sounds pretty darn fabulous. Yeah. I will have a big hat on and you guys will see me at night since I don't get along with the sun very well. So that, that uh, Beach or Mountain, you could have both of the Greek islands, but Beach or Mountain. Lately, I've really been in a mountain living. Graham or Cunningham? Um, I guess I'd say Graham. Okay, because, do tell. Uh, I, 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 I've just never really been that drawn to Cunningham's work. Although I have seen a piece of this called Inlets. I thought that was really interesting. Are you a um, rehearsal or performance person? Depends. As a dancer, I was much more into performance, but as a director and choreographer, you know, like the rehearsals are, you better like rehearsing because, you know, you're <laughs> Yeah. So uh, rubies, emeralds, or diamonds? To wear? Or the well, ballet? all of them, if you like, but we're, we were thinking more in terms of the ballet. Although um, I, I like rubies the most out of the three. Although diamonds is pretty spectacular if you have the right ballerina doing it. Yeah. So bigger question, what would you like to see changed in the art form? And you can take this question wherever you want, but we did talk to each other a little bit about getting more dance journalists out of New York and over to the West Coast, other parts of the United States, expanding their coverage and not going for the most obvious story. You wanna talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I would love, to, I mean, I'm kind of surprised that dance media, um, they don't have more journalists or sort of satellite, uh, satellite persons here in LA. Um, maybe they do, I don't know, but I, I just, yeah, I, I, I would love there for there to be more of like a dance uh, critic, dance journalist presence. Um, Cause yeah, whenever I read, you know, stuff in dance magazine or point or it just seems very New York, New York sense, you know, centered New York focused um, for the most part. And uh, there's a lot of good stuff, you know, being created all over the place. And, and Instagram and social media has certainly opened those doors you know like when I was a dancer a young dancer it was like and if you weren't in New York it's like where were you you know it was kind of you were just sort of but with Instagram and all this uh you know everybody has a presence now so which is great because now all ballet companies from everywhere could really get attention and gain some notoriety and you would think so, but I, I almost think it, it becomes a cacophony, right? You have to sort of cleave your way through the thicket. Having a, having your poster up in the subways in New York kind of helps a lot, but you know, yeah. Um, no, media, it's all about media. I mean, it, media chooses to focus on, they, they put the, the spotlight, you know, on what everybody's going to focus on. And you have to be very, if you want to see change, you know, for instance, if you want to see more female directors, voices heard, more female choreographers, you know, and their voices heard, put the spotlight on them. The media really has a big role to play in that. You know, the, we're out there, women are out there, but if the media is only choosing to focus on, you know, few men, then, you know, what are, what are company directors supposed to do? They have to commission the works from the people that will sell the tickets. 
So the directors are sort of also at the whim of- You know, I hadn't thought about it that way at all. That's actually a really inf insightful comment. Um, and I hadn't thought of that it from that perspective, whether you're a male or a female artistic director, if you want your work noticed and if it's gonna get noticed and it gets critical acclaim, um, then all of a sudden it vaults you up, particularly if you're outside of New York and maybe you can get more funding, et cetera. So it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy to some totally. extent. Tell us about next year for you before we hang up, quote unquote, before we finish up. Tell us about your year. Yeah, well, we're planning on um, I'm planning another film to be done in the fall. Still working out some logistics there, but a lengthier film. We did that small short one, Breathe In, that we released in June. That was just like barely five and a half minutes. So this will be a lengthier, um, a lengthier piece. So that's hopefully going to be able to happen in the fall. Like I said things are still coming together with that. And then we have a little idea for the spring. Um, I'm actually reaching out to an institution here in LA to see if they'll work with us. But so I, I, I can't really say anything yet because nothing's set in stone, but let us know. Like some sort of outdoor, you know, some, something that could be performed outdoors. And Okay, thank you, Melissa, so very much. We're really looking forward to seeing what's coming next for you all. Thank you so much. Thank you.